the D-pad contains crude language, cringe humor, and suggestive themes, viewer discretion is advised. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. We're gonna have a TV party tonight. All right! We're gonna have a TV party, all right! Hello. Shalom. All right. Fake so, uh, Italian so noises. Fake Italian noises. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah. Welcome to the D Pad. I'm your host, Easy Dog. We're here with um, Mark and uh, Austin Trench. He's back again. And uh, yes, I'm yeah. back, but I'm too whack. Oh. No, you're not. Okay. Well, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Alright, so how have you guys been doing? I've been doing kind of okay. Ugh. Played a bit of the Secret World Legends when it was finally dropped after downloading it. Still good. Still good. I've just been living in a constant state of fear and misery. Funny, that's how I usually live. Yeah, quit stealing Mark's stick, Trench. I, I can't help it. <laughs> But other than that, it's so I just... easy. I just make it look better. <laughs> Careful. Other than that, I just played some uh, Jo'in. I just killed Hagalas. And I just got the final jo the last one, uh, Ka Kaunan. What you call me? <laughs> no, Ka Kaunan. It's Gesundheit. the... It's the, it's the Jo'in of Fire, basically. Uh, other okay. than that, uh, I beat Watch Dogs 2 a few hours ago, dropped my reviews. It was it was it was a fun game. Hmm. So it's a fun game, better than the first one. And uh, yeah. Other than that, I've just been watching videos and junk. Huh. Yeah. Me too. I haven't really been doing much either. Um. Just been watching a lot of uh, random vids on YouTube. Uh. Let's see. My mom's been trying to get me to get a job to involving medical coding. Really? You you're uh yeah. you're versed in that? Well versed in coding? Not really. Not as much as the as the next guy. He turns out he's actually good at playing in uh coding cough syrup. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh, but, you. I will be here uh, never. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I, I mostly just agreed with it, mostly coming from the fact that, well, I need to get me a job, and the only thing I need to do is, really, I'm trying to do is to sell my Wii U and Bandit 2 to be able to uh, get some cash so I can pre-order Destiny 2 when it comes out next month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Destiny, I I don't know, it's, it's an interesting looking game, I just, just never really wowed me, honestly. Just looks like Halo across the Borderlands. I don't know. It's it's a, I I know. Wait, what? Halo across the Borderlands? Yeah, because it's made by Bungie and it's you get all this loot. Oh, Destiny Two. Yeah, I, I I played the demo for Destiny Two and I really wanted to try it out because I was like the demo is gonna make or break it and I was like it it was good. It was good because I literally break uh, these nuts. Oh. Uh, but other than that, I played it with my friends. And we all liked it, and uh, we were all actually, we we're all actually gonna get it. I was I just had to pre-order, and I'm done. All right, that's cool. Which is why I need to trade in my Wii U because I can get 75 bucks from GameStop. Oh, jeez, probably get mm -hmm. more off that online. I don't know. Yeah, like on Amazon or Meanwhile, something. Meanwhile, someone's starving to death somewhere. Yeah, first world problems. Yeah. But oh, it, God, Austin, why are you such an asshole? Because I was just born that way. Yeah. <laughs> I just came out going, y'all ain't shit! <laughs> it was like, can we put him back? <laughs> Is it too late to abort him? Nah, too late. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Cricket shitty attitude on life. It was like, oh. Wow, great delivery, great. You know, other people try dude, just look off to the distance, going how easy would be to just drop him, drop me. 
<laughs> oh shit! <coughs> like going. Bah, bah, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any uh, news? Anything going on? Um, aside from the fact people were freaking the hell out about Game of Thrones, like the recent episode that happened. Oh, okay. I don't watch the Game of Thrones. I I think it's kind of just dumb. That's just my opinion, but like, hmm. I I understand why people like it because it has two things: fantasy p people crave and desire. One to see real human boobs. <laughs> Second. <laughs> uh, to see a fully realized fantasy world that they've read about. Yeah, granted, there's also the fact that, quite literally, he, uh, George R. R. Martin threw the ha threw the um, generic tropes involving fantasy genres and just threw it out the window. So yeah, lots of people die. Oh yeah, even if it's characters that have a backstory, you just I saw the South Park spoof, where it's just like, oh, oh. <laughs> they just get stabbed. I was like, oh wow, I really like this guy's story. Oh, no, no, it's gone. <laughs> what, you actually thought that was going somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Although, that one, the one character at the end of the last, of the last episode, Lady, Lady Olena Tyrell, she was just badass. With what she just, with that big bombshell she dropped at the end. She just like, dropped the mic. Exit she stage picked up left. the mic because she realized how loud it was. Like, oh, sorry. But you, you should have you should have seen it. Like it was nuts. But that episode was crazy. The next episode is going to even be crazier if what I think is going to happen happens, and if what I find out about these leaks have been are true. Like some someone actually hacked it, hacked the HBO and got leaks to future some of the future episodes. At first it was just, at first I thought it wasn't wasn't anything major. Just a few scripts from next Game of Thrones episodes, but it turns out it was more. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm, that's, that's interesting. Like, we usually just hear a lot of just hackings mostly about a certain company that really is not doing well in its animation, film, television, marketing, anything else that doesn't involve video game department. Oh, gee, I wonder what you're talking about. Mm. Rise with Bony? Bony, uh... Sony Blowy. Just gonna go out and say Sony? Is that it? I don't call it Sony, I call it Blowy. Uh, yeah. Or better, Baloney. <laughs> Are we gonna talk about the Emoji Movie? Uh, Everyone is panning to? that it's just... Yeah. <laughs> Do we need to? That's the question, because... To give it's a shit literally or not so to give a shit. bad that everyone calls it bad. Yeah, well, of course. It was bad from the start. I don't know why people are surprised. Like, what were they going to get? The, it's, it makes Food Fight look good. I haven't seen the movie, but literally, this is stuff we've seen before. If it came out in 2002, people have been blown away by it. But... This mm. isn't, this isn't that. It's obviously someone... Looked over and said, okay, here are all these things from, like, Book of Life. Here's this thing from the Lego movie. Here's this thing from that. You and the animation team that didn't really make good movies like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs can just make this. Kids will see it. And we'll have a profit margin because we're really trying to get our act together with a lot of things. We're still screwing up in the Ghostbusters department. Even though that's a year behind them. So we're just desperate for it. Even though, like, apparently the director wanted to make an emoji movie because he was watching Toy Story while coming up with an idea for an animated picture. And then someone sent him an emoji. He was like, <gasps> aha! We all know it was just going to be just, it was going to just be wrecked. But it's, it, it got a draw dropping zero on Rotten Tomatoes. It's at six now. Really? I thought it was zero. Who are these madmen that enjoy it? I bet it was Corey Coleman from Double Toasted. <laughs> cool. He said he didn't give it a, a fuck you rating. He uh -huh. gave it a just some old bullshit. It's like, yeah. That means he liked it a little. Uh. Oh man! <laughs> you destroyed the world with Space Jam and now this? Uh. Maybe there's contrarians. Movie from the 
director of Stitch has a glitch. Oh, fuck. Not that. That movie was terrible. It made the other directed DVD movies look like Oscar winning movies. <laughs> and it just sucks that that one had the best animation of all of them. Uh, actually, I haven't seen that one. Don't. It's boring. It's useless to the quote unquote canon of this whole thing that's all just sped off of a movie that was altered a lot because of 9 11. Was, oh yeah, uh, the movie was altered a lot. Really? Oh, at the ending was altered. Sorry. Let me see. Where the ending was supposed to be Stitch hijacks a plane. Yeah, I can see why. He's just like, okay, we got this settled. Someone <laughs> rushes in and be like, stop. Hmm. Oh my god. That's that lion. <laughs> Huh. But yeah, long story short, Emoji Movie, that's not. Everyone else has said something about it. It's generic, by-the-numbers animated picture that's going to be forgotten about. It was a D DOA movie, so there's not really anything worth talking about it. Yeah. You at another Comic-Con. Dude, you know with great power comes a big-ass Comic-Con. Four days when all of the media outlets try to pretend they've always cared about us. Boom! What we need to talk about is freaking Comic-Con, because they just... They just unloaded on all of us. They just like, wow. Oh, we're it's... gonna do Comic Con talk. I didn't go. Oh though. yeah. Well, let's start with one of the teasers they so showed for a sequel that we may or may not have wanted, but it looks interesting. Pacific Rim Uprising. That's out. No, the teaser. Oh. Teaser trailer. Hmm. Right off the bat, if you notice, if you guys look at it, it has a vibe of a Paul Verhoeven movie where it's it's kind of on the cuff with its sort of uh, propaganda, you know? Where it's like, hey, join the Jaeger program, blah, blah, blah. The monsters are right there, and, like, it's got John Boyega in it. And the effects are meh, but it's supposed to be, like, a training video thing. Like a marketing training video, and I, it has a great introduction. It even has that Glados voice back, which, which is weird because they never really gave that voice a computer name. Like, oh, this is Vox. This is blah 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 blah. One of our ship's computers. Like, no, it's just a computer voice. I was like, ah. But yeah, that teaser was a lot of fun. Very short, and it just got you pumped. They even unleashed. Uh, sort of the designs for the other Jaegers, including the new ones that it looks more anime-esque. Where Universal hopefully has learned its lessons with a monster verse because we don't need another Dark Universe incident. Or they get the Kurtzman people to make a crappy movie no one wanted. And that I had to sit through because I wanted to see something bad, but I was offended by it because they remade some of my favorite 80s movies into a hodgepodge of a bad mummy movie. You know, we don't need to see that again. Yeah, I still haven't seen that mummy movie. I don't yeah, it's a remake great. of a great movie called Life Force. Oh, I think I've heard about that. Life? Oh, is, is that what it is? Is that what the original mummy was called? The one with... Like the, like the original trilogy mummy? No, 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 no. Life Force is a space vampire movie. Yeah, it was like, um... It's like... Alien thing or something? I don't know. It's, I haven't it seen it. It was written by the people who made Alien. Yeah, yeah. And made, directed by the guy who directed the original Texas Chainsaw. So, so mm. F yeah, dude. Hmm. Literally, if you watch that back to back, it's the same thing. Only swap out a vampire with a mummy, and with a very pathetic, to quote a uh, red letter media, pathetic attempt at setting up a universe because they want money. 
And I don't even like red letter media, and they were totally right. <laughs> right, you totally don't like them, Mr. Sundari. <sighs> Down, like, down. Uh, okay, what's, what else? I mean, uh, aside from movies, I think one of the few things I can think of movie-wise that I'm kind of looking for, uh, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I, I hear good or bad things about it. I don't really want to see it because I'm not really a fan of Luke Besson. I thought I, it looked, I thought, like, the trailers and stuff look pretty cool. Yeah, but it's just like, I'm just not into that guy's movies. I don't like The Fifth Element. Everyone else does but me. Like, I consider it in the line of, like, uh, Independence Day, where I just think of it as really bad, artsy schlock. You're, wait, you're calling Independence Day artsy? <laughs> well, there is a craft to it. That was... A special made effect driven movie. What do you mean like effects driven? I thought you meant like it was trying to be Yeah, the artsy. The, uh, like, although Fifth Element is a lot more art house driven. Yeah, like more experimental I guess would be the uh, word. Experimental because it's deep and edgelord. Yeah. yeah. But yeah if you want to go see it, go ahead. Like It's probably got the same things everybody loves about it. It's incredibly imaginative but a lot of people don't understand Luc Besson didn't make Valerian. He was inspired by Valerian to make the fifth element. That's how that movie got made, was because he read that book. So, it is a comic book movie. Huh. I uh, didn't know it was a comic Probably a French one. Yeah. That's probably why not many people have heard of it. I mean, I love the guys they got to play, like, the main character, Valerian. I like that guy, if you've seen him in, uh... No, I ignore Spider-Man 2. I mean, like, uh... If you see him in anything else, he's actually really good. Like, Chronicle, or... A Cure for Wellness, which I view as an underrated movie. Because it's just so fucked up, and that's why I like it. Hmm. But, you know, I'm... If you want to go see it, go ahead. And then, other than that, there's not really much movies coming out. We're kind of in the dead zone of movies right now. Yeah. I am I mean, a little bit excited. We haven't had that good of a luck with movies, though. We've gotten, like, good things like Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Power Rangers. We're probably going to be getting uh, Birth of the Dragon. Birth of a Dragon? Oh, yeah, that movie. Birth of the Dragon. Birth yeah, the Bruce Lee movie. Yeah, I don't know what to think about that one. Part of me feels excited, but then you see the WWE logo, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Wait, oh god. One of the distributors, I'm like, uh oh. Um. And I feel like maybe it will possibly offend the 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 per the persona slash legend of Bruce Lee, because Bruce Lee, other than a fighter, he was a pretty good philosopher. He could talk a lot better, like he could talk as much as he could fight. A lot, actually. And it feels like it's just going to come... Just going to focus on the fighting rather than who Bruce Lee was as a person. There are better movies that have talked about Bruce Lee's life. One of them, I really... I think it is called... Uh, the Yeah, I think it is also called Birth of a Dragon. Or just Red Dragon. I'm trying to remember what it was, but it was such a really endearing story. It even had, like, a very... Dis disturbing sort of outlook before his like Bruce Lee's death and even talked about Brandon Lee just like it was all over the place and that's what I liked about it like it even had hints about his death where he would constantly get headaches where I just I look into Bruce Lee he's like wow he's such a creative figure and other than a martial artist and actor he was a good person he tried to do the best he could and he got screwed by a lot of the Hollywood system because one, no one wanted an Asian actor as a main lead in television, and that's when they stole his TV show, Kung Fu. And you learn all that in the movie, and you're like, God. And this guy came from such a small beginning, from just a guy who just came to the U.S. working in a freaking Chinese restaurant to only working for like towards people who are a little bit more racist and teaching them like you know, compassion, love, you know, like all that hero, like he was a real deal hero. 
and I think this might offend it. Or worse, it'll just make it completely boring. And half the good stuff you see is in the trailer, and it will have terrible acting. Not from the main lead playing Bruce. I've seen how he's act. He's pretty good. But everyone else, I'm worried. Like, what if all the best actors we've seen are in the trailer, and then the rest of it is just, like, this really terrible dialogue spoken in exposition going like, Hey, Bruce, you gotta know who this guy is. Here are his stats. He's like, it's dangerous to go alone. Bruce, take this. Thank you, Chuck Norris. Hmm... Uh, yeah. And then he punches Jackie Chan <laughs> in the face and then says, Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like that's actually how they met. Really? Yeah, he punched him in the face during like a fight sequence. And then when the take was over, he was like, Oh my god Like I knew he worked with uh, the movie um with uh Bruce, but I didn't know that's how they met. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Chuck Norris and and, uh, and Jackie Chan both knew him. Even if it was just for a little bit, it was just like, wow, surreal. Yeah. Hong Kong today, whenever they make a Kung Fu movie, they have to make a Bruce Lee reference. He is a hero in China. They're, well, it's Bruce freaking Lee, man. I mean, come on. Hell, if you look at Stephen Chow's movies, that's all he ever likes to reference. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm just saying. There's a reason why, because he was the man, the myth, and the legend. He was all that before the bag of chips. Yeah, he's really... I mean, to say he's iconic is an understatement. I mean, so many people he's inspired, it's it's just unreal. And I've barely seen any of his movies. I didn't need to. I just liked listening to the man be interviewed. Like, he was such a fascinating person. Like, he never knew what was going on in his mind besides a possible, uh, I think, brain hemorrhage from, like, either getting kicked in the head too many times or from, or from like, uh, you know, using way too many aspirins because apparently that's what happened. Like, he just had a lot of headaches, a lot of aspirin uses and may have had an overdose of it. It's, there's so many theories. I like to think that's a logical one because, he, you know, he just died in his sleep. Peacefully. Hmm. Yep. You boys done playing? This is Kung Fu. You're not training for the Olympics. You're training for the street. About uh, any other uh, movies? Well, you did mention that one movie about the creator of the Book of Life, uh, Gutier George Gutierrez. He's yeah. making that Lego movie. Yeah. Uh, what like Lego called... movie is he making? It's called a Race of. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Race of Bricks, I think. Hold on, I'm actually gonna try to. Damn it. Oh, like, is it the origin of Legos movie? Like, oh, this is where they were created? Um, I didn't like get much info Google on it. Made them. But it probably could be like some sort of... Oh, doctor. it's probably a biopic. That's yeah. fine, you know. It's an interesting idea. I mean, I think the original creators were like Lincoln Log Makers. Yeah, it was like Sweden or no? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think was... Germany somewhere. Yeah, it was like somewhere one of those, in Germany. One of those countries in Europe. Europa. Yeah, it seems like um, an interesting movie. It kind of ties everything together in the. Uh, I hate to say this, but um, Lego universe. Lego it's like the origins. Yeah. Honestly, that would be cool. I mean, considering the guy made the Book of Life, one of probably my favorite movies that I have seen. That if I could get a freaking copy of it, I would. I would record that again. I would record that and then watch it eight more times. Well, probably more. I'm excited for the sequel. There's a sequel? Yeah, he's talked about that for years. He Guillermo. He, he better make a sequel for that because, god damn, that needs a sequel. Hopefully they can market it better. Yeah, maybe even make a cartoon series based off it. No, that's pushing it. 
That yeah. Question. Yeah, those usually I don't. I mean, if it was a part. Absolutely, though, and Stitch did, and then it ended up going to Japan. Do you want that on your hands? <laughs> well, if they do it the same style as they did with Manny Rivera, I think he might actually have a oh, chance. Oh, where it fades into obscurity and then it's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the art style of Manny Rivera, but. <laughs> They're, in fact, they're actually in the it, intro it, to the town. Yeah, really? I, I literally saw that. I mean, like when I looked at the intro for the town, and and you actually see Manny and Frida and like the, and the fault, grandpa right? and the dad and the and Manny's mom. Huh. Yeah, you actually see them like in the right. I only saw Manny and Frida though. Wait, what? But if anything, like honestly, like I know I've seen Manny Rivera and I love that show. I want to re watch it again now. I, was, I like that show, too. It was basically, imagine if Mucha Lucha was good. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what I say about Pacific Rim. Imagine if... I was going to say less good. about the wrestling, luchador wrestling moves, and more about kicking butt. Yeah, yeah I don't know what... Anyone really care about that? Yeah, Mucha Lucha. I don't know what it was trying to do with that. I mean, kids uh, like um... after Nacho Libre did it, but it was like... Then they were like, we don't care. Yeah, it was, it was such a no, such a, I don't know, it was such an empty show. It didn't like have any, any flair to it. It was trying to be something, but it was just a whole lot of nothing in the end. It had Penn it and Teller though. Early Flash show. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, I bet the animation holds up. No. Mm -hmm. It's early 2000s Flash animation. What do you expect? But yeah, that movie. Uh, it's called the Billion Brick Race, not a race of bricks. Never mind. That looks interesting. We don't have much info about it yet, but I'm sure it'll like be some sort of an, I guess, origin story or like a Lego documentary. Something about Legos. That's, that's the title. Something about Legos. And hopefully that'll like get a more um, exposure, so you can maybe make some other stuff because he does good mm. stuff. Exactly. Oh, also, they released recently the new trailer for the hit, the new hit, possible hit, childhood ruining movie, It. And I don't mean childhood ruins like they messed it up. I mean, it will destroy a child's childhood. I can imagine that. <laughs> Not because of the scary clown, but because of the kids are a lot smarter nowadays. Okay, I take that back. They're not that smart. They still... You know, they still watch Pan Pizza's videos. Just kidding, just kidding. Oh, shit, you're really just trying to piss off everyone today. Hey, everyone. At least they're not that one guy uh, who won't be named yeah. trying to be Pan so badly. It, it, oh, it just no. hurts him. Why would no. you want to be Pan out of all the people in the universe? Some Pan sad people pizza? just want to be sad. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you're one to talk. You sound like him more. Really? <laughs> oh, I can't help that. That's just how my voice is. I don't know. God. Mm -hmm. Maybe this Rip is off like a... that math. Pan yeah. Pizza. Oh no. It's a Metal Gear Solid Five thing. It's I'm a uh, not actually Pan Pizza. <laughs> I'm just made to look Wink. like him and sound like him. It <laughs> wakes under the eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, a lot of good trailers though. From the It movie, along with the uh, basic things you know, if you've seen the miniseries and the hilarious ending of a mm -hmm. giant spider, you know that this movie is part one. So it's a two-part movie series, so you're going to see the cliche but heartwarming thing that Stranger Things did. Hell, it even has an actor from it, where it is going to just be Stranger Things again, only with a killer clown. But uh, I really hope that they do a lot of the things from the book, minus the certain things that we're not going to get into, like uh, maybe discuss these kids growing up, how they feel towards the world, because that's why a lot of people liked the book, because it actually it had something to say about childhood, growing up, accepting new people into you, dealing with bullies, standing together as a team against adversity. And also running from your lives from a creature that can take shapes, control people's minds, and appear to you as... Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure about the whole two-part thing. I mean, I understand why they're doing it. You know, money, all that stuff, but... Yeah, let's just say, whenever uh, they make a scene, was like, oh yeah, because money. Yeah, it's pretty much the reason. As cynical as that sounds, that's it. 
I wish studios would do that thing that when you go to a Comic Con, outside you see a homeless guy, and he just has "Why lie? It's for vodka." It's like <laughs> he earned his money by being honest. That's right. Like, <laughs> why can't they be honest? It's like, hey, we want your money. Let's make a sequel. All right. At least you're open about it. You don't have to kiss our buns. Mm. But I'm excited for it because, one, I'm a grown man and I'm not afraid of that clown anymore. <laughs> and, two, I think it's good to see how terrified people will be in a the theater over a guy in two on the nose evil clown makeup. And it's clearly going to affect people that are affected by those clowns in the woods epidemic. Which surprisingly, so we'll I haven't see. seen many of those clowns. So it wasn't that big. Yeah, because the fad got old. Yeah. <sighs> I'm like, this sucks. We're not doing it anymore. We're going to go kidnap kids the old way. Bring out the van. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, who knows? We might get a resurgence because of that movie. Oh boy. We see more stories mm -hmm. of people who are dressed as Batman beat these people up. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting to walk in on. What, Batman fights it? Yes. Oh. It beats the shit out of it. He's like, oh god, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never. I hate clothes. Clowns and snakes, I hate them. <laughs> He's beating his teeth out and like blood everyone's like, help me! <laughs> like No. You're just drinking a juice box. <laughs> You're just enjoying the show. Just sit back and watch. It's like this is a lot better than DCEU. <laughs> That's for sure. Fuck you. Yeah. Oh, also, they released a trailer for Justice League. It looks a lot better than the last trailer. Never saw it. Yeah, I I don't really want to look at it because I don't really want to have any expectations. I just kind of want to go in blind because I've been really worried about the Justice League movie ever since it's been announced, like, years ago. Uh, my it doesn't feelings. have Snyder in it anymore. I don't know why you're upset. It's just, it's got someone like Joss Me. Oh, that's worse. Oh, oh. Yeah. Zack not bad though. I think he just, I don't know. He had a misstep. Yeah, I think like, he was. I think he was. I think he kind of messed up. I think he thought he was gonna play the Riddler. He would have made a great Riddler, but instead he got picked as the. Wait, who are we talking about? It was because. Zach because the... someone... Yeah. Zach Shire. Because... Zack Snyder didn't like someone making fun of him on the internet, so he made a parody of that person. Seriously? That was Max Landis. Yes. Uh... Oh, come on. That's, I like that idea that Max Landis is an asshole. I'm like, wow, he's like how he is in real life. <laughs> That's right. American Ultra was boring. Yeah, that was wasted potential. I give it that. But yeah. Boring. Yeah. Jason Bourne meets Pineapple Express, my ass. <laughs> At least Pineapple Express was funny. <laughs> but it did give me something I've always wanted to see. Topher Gray Grace gets strangled, strangled and shot in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> so Topher Grace fans out there, you know who this is. <laughs> Oh, it's just like I can just already hear the keyboard warriors that just skim through your show. They skim. Yeah, they don't comment. Except if they want to oh. correct one of my grammatical errors that I make constantly. Well, none of us are scripted, so everything we say is grammatical. Errored. <laughs> other than that, movies were... Eh. TV shows, on the other hand, we're doing pretty good. We're unfortunately getting The Defenders, which is a Netflix show that we don't really care for. We're getting a lot of good things from Amazon, though. One of them being a film TV movie, technically, about a comic book series that's going to be a little bit controversial. Uh, my friend Dahmer. 
Hmm. Yeah. Oh. What? Is the high school life of Jeffrey Dahmer. Who? He was a pretty infamous serial killer. Let's just put it like that. Yeah. Yeah. It talks a lot about what led up to him doing the horrible things he did, such as collecting animal bones, having alcoholic issues, not being comfortable with his body, dealing with certain feelings and desires that weren't acceptable in his in the 1970s or 80s, you know, it's it, it's kind of it's giving you were it's giving you a question in the trailer was a killer made or was he born that way? It's the nature versus nurture thing that a reviewer named uh, the maniacal cinephile said hmm. in his review of the Halloween movies, which I feel they're going with both because he had a it's a whole thing you have to research. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it looks creepy as well as kind of on the nose because it's like he always has that very bleak, very I'm going to kill you stare throughout the entire trailer. Is like, come on, Jeffrey's such a nice guy. And he starts doing things like throwing his books here, going, Wee! it's like, no one thought that was a boarding sign. Like, poor, poor people, just poor people, just unfortunate. But it looks scary, and I really want to check it out. I just really hope it's good because they really look like they could shed some light on some things because this is a comic series talking about. Uh, a guy who knew him, who was one of his friends that growing up and it was like kind of like what led to what he became years later in life and death. So we'll just have to see how it is. We had a trailer for The Tick. Oh, that, I haven't seen it. That was actually really good. Oh, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a parody of both lighthearted comic book stuff with the hilariously dark and gritty you know superhero stuff it's done to the point where it's hilarious and you understand while it is and so far the guys they got to play the tick and arthur are on point they're a little bit different but that's a good thing and the tick character if you've seen the trailer he embodies the spirit of the adam west batman he even talks like him a little he even said in an interview at Comic-Con, like, I've interviewed Adam West on a podcast I used to do, and he did an impression of him that was like, wow! And so you could tell there's, like, a little bit of that in the Tick's new voice, like, this is how he talks. Like, he talks like a, a game show host mixed with that. <laughs> and I think that's great. That's the Tick we know, because I've seen the pilot, if you haven't, where he's in this, like, dark, dingy place. These people are swearing and stuff like that. And he's like, wicked men. Like, he, he talks like a cartoon interacting in the real world. But his powers work in the real world. Where people are shooting at him, nothing happened. He's like, listen, buddy, guns aren't going to solve all your problems. It's like, oh, my God. You're just like, daredevil, screw your hallway scene. This is hilarious. It's it's it, I recommend you guys see. I think it comes out on the 28th or 25th of August. Oh, so nice. on Amazon Prime though, so Ooh. you're gonna have to, oh. you know, just look forward to that, I guess. But if you have money in Amazon Prime, you're covered. They're gonna release season one soon, so I'm excited for it. It looks like a ton of fun, and if you're a comic book fan, The Tick is a must for you because. It respectfully pokes fun at the things you love, but in a way that doesn't feel hateful. Mm -hmm. Like Ralph the Movie Maker's videos. <laughs> I was going to say how Disney... Oh, no, I openly say, fuck. Yeah. ...pokes at the uh, the princess trope. That was, was going to be mm -hmm. my example. All right. Less controversial. It's like, Austin, why do you hate everyone? Because I just do! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But it pokes fun at it in a less mean-spirited way, kind of like Deadpool. It hmm. it celebrates it, and it says, Hey, dude, don't be afraid to be kid-friendly. Don't be afraid to be, like, stuff. And there's a really good story about friendship, destiny, and insert comic book trope here. 
Sounds very 90s. It actually reminds me of the uh, the cartoon. That's actually how I knew about the tick. It is. It's a lot like the cartoon. A lot more than the 2000 sitcom show with Patrick Warburton. No offense to Patrick, but I feel like the new show for Amazon understands what it is now, and in, and it's not in uh, editing and financial hell like the sitcom show because a lot it became a sitcom when it was supposed to be an, kind of an action comedy show because no one would tune in to watch it. And no one would actually go to see it, which they were right. But mm. it did uh, it it did get a cult following, which I'm extremely happy for. Yeah, I'll we also had that. Stranger Things. Oh yeah, Stranger Things. It or... was good. That's all I gotta say. It's very 80s, so yeah, I've it's seen a couple. Definitely gonna give people a nostalgia boner. Uh huh. <laughs> Hell, they even used Thriller. People dress like Ghostbusters. Thriller! Oh, jeez. So much 80s. Can't take all the nostalgia. <laughs> You're going to be throwing up leg warmers. <laughs> like some messed up scene from The Conjuring instead of, or like The Ring instead of hair they puke out. It's like leg warmers. <laughs> then you hear Jazzer Size videos go off in the corner, like, what's happening? <laughs> What else is next? What's next? What's next? What's next? Let's see. Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. Rick and Morty. Loser. He's back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the um the newest episode. It was uh, really good. It um, I kind of got this feeling that uh, Dan Harmon was watching a lot of those um, what's it called? Jump not ups videos where he just mods fallout for for like entire episodes of rick and morty because it was like a oh, wasteland yeah. kind of thing because it was not quite mad max Mixed but mad max yeah it was like all these different like wasteland tropes and i was like wait is this a reference to um to possible fallout as well as mad max maybe saw just those to be some sort of metaphor for Morty and Summer dealing with a divorce of a marriage that we wish died a long time ago. Yep. I'm glad Jerry's gone. They were too good for... I mean, he was too good for them. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I want to feel sorry for Jerry, but after a no, while, he's... it's just like, why? What's the point? What is the Jerry? point? Like, he is an irredeemable douchebag of a person. Yeah. Like, I, I've never wanted to say this to a human being, but I can say it to a cartoon. He is one of the most useless human beings in any universe. <laughs> even even bums sort of serve a purpose in that world. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, with what happened with um, Jerry, like, a lot of people are, the bit, are theorizing that he's going to come back, maybe with the galactic government to try to or with, or with a Phoenix person and what, what was her name? Tiffany? Um, yeah, the girl that Phoenix, yeah. yeah, it just like come back with them to get back at Rick. Hmm. And, and some people, there's Rick also a theory Phoenix. about, and there's also like a theory that Rick, uh, that Rick, uh, Morty might be actually evil Morty. I've heard that one. I don't, yeah, that I don't one, think so. Huh? Could be. Oh yeah, Evil Morty. I keep thinking Evil Morty is the Morty from the very first scene of episode one. He's the one that he's the one that survived when Rick blew up humanity. Yeah. Hmm. That would be such a great twist, wouldn't it? Be like, yeah, you left me here to die. Oh. Would make sense if he since he's technically a cyborg. I had to rebuild myself, Rick. Oh, How like... we... Unless they did something like what they did to Frieza. Just rebuild them. Now, gonna be right back for a sec. Alright. Bathroom. Yeah, Frieza's gonna beat him up for saying that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for Rick and Morty. I like it. like what they're doing. I like they're going to a lot darker place, but a way that's, that's needed because 
Summer and Morty are terrible people. And that's why we like them because yeah. they don't care that they're bad. They 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 just they're like whatever at this uh -huh. point. They don't care because Summer realizes she exists in an infinite universe. So there is no point to her care about being a good person. Mm -hmm. God, I know. Like, I can't believe Dan Harmon and like they don't just pop like just antidepressants every time they, they come up with stuff. Yeah, because a lot of those episodes just leave me on a really, really down note. I mean, Jesus. I still think the funniest part of any Rick and Morty was where you see Beth go into the kitchen, gobble down pills and wine. I'm like, I am laughing my ass off. I show my parents that, and they're like, why are you laughing? That is not funny. Like, it is because it's not me. <laughs> yeah. Cruel. Yeah. Is that kind Rick of... and Morty is essentially the show about someone with an OC and who just likes to do terrible things to an OC. There's a meme of that somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'll just go on for affinity. I'm sure you'll find a fetish for that. Torturing. No, like there's a meme where someone says, hey, I have an OC. I'm going to make sure a lot of good things happen to it. Then it dunks it into a pool of horrible things. Oh, God. Tragedy. <laughs> but Rick, Rick's still Rick, and that's why I like him. Yeah. Always I thought Rick. the episode was really good. Like, uh, Summer got to blow off a lot of steam. Mm-hmm. Morty did too, but the real episode had a moral, which is sad, because it's like, hey, go say hi to your dad, but also tell him to fuck off. You felt like it kind of betrayed the um, the show's overall purpose, I guess. No, I felt or... like the moral was sad, but in a oh, okay, yeah. way that you needed to understand. Where it's like your parents are getting divorced, deal with it. Yeah, it sucks, but like, there's a reason why your dad's kind of a selfish dick and your grandpa's a selfish dick. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Why I say grandpa is because who's really running that marriage at this point? Yeah, pretty much. Like his daughter, yeah, his daughter has battered housewife syndrome. <laughs> oh yeah, her dad. Yeah, it's kind I'm... of sad in its own way, but I know people who are like that, so you just look at him and go, "Dumb bitch." What mm. happened? Still talking, talking about... about Rick and Morty. Yeah, ah, uh, Morty. Okay. What did you like about the new episode? Well, I kind of liked how it was mostly inspiring about Mad Max and, like, the post-apocalyptic thing. And, like, how if you saw, like, at the end of the promo for it, you actually see the house, Hemorrhage's house, that um, Rick and Beth were living in at the beginning. I'm like, huh. Hmm. I also kind of liked how, like, it really, like, it showed them um, how they were, like, uh coping with what was going on with violence <laughs> yeah and like how like literally I like how with uh, hem hemorrhage like when they were in that scene with, when they were scouring the ruins and he was talking about how the apocalypse happened but he called it the, the boom boom and uh, someone made that joke what did your boom boom uh, burn away your burn away like uh destroy your vocabulary like you can't read a dictionary i i couldn't remember what she it said was like, but did the boom boom blow away your wordy books or something like that and then uh and he, just like, like you mean a dictionary yeah something like that yeah and then like he he looks at the poster and he's like i was once a boy before the boom boom i think and oh, someone's so like you, you want to go ahead you want to go ahead and pee on it get out of my head <laughs> And like you see... think, what if this was the world that Rick blew up? Yeah, hmm. maybe. But like then you, when he like takes off his helmet the first time, I was expecting like some scarred, badass-looking guy. But he was like, huh? He has a like mustache, a man. <laughs> yeah, like he had like a mustache. I'm like, huh? And a pale face. <laughs> yeah, I think it must be from the book, from the thing. Yeah, yeah. that's probably him. I was like, weird. I was expecting something a lot more cooler. 
That's Even what the show does. Was. Like, oh, yeah. What? I can I can fix my face. I can scar it. It's like, no, 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 no. It's fine. Fine. <laughs> I love that type of humor. Yeah, that, that that's just hilarious. And then when the hand, like Morty and the hand bonded. Mm-hmm. The, that, the that hand was... had a backstory out of nowhere. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you feel awkward. That then was... he goes to kill like... King Joffrey, basically. That was hilarious, and he was, and then he just sees Rick. He's like, "Rick, what are you? Uh, no, don't, don't mind me. Just continue what you're doing." <laughs> it's like he just walked in on him, you know, burping the worm, <laughs> choking his murder chicken. Yeah, I think we, we got it. We got it. <laughs> I'm talking jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> Giving him the old carotene. <laughs> To make you scream Too kung late. fu. <laughs> I know kung fu, bitch. Uh, oh, don't get me started. Like they're gonna—they made references to the Matrix in like Rick and Morty promos, which I love those promos, by the way. They also made the reference, especially that one reference in the episode. Rick called the Blood Dome the Thunder Dome. Yeah, that Thunder Dome over there. <laughs> you mean the Blood Dome? Call whatever you want, man. And like. That scene, like, at the end, like, when they leave, Rick takes the power source, you just hear Hammer screaming, No! Yeah. He could have at least left that. But, you know, he's yeah, Rick. Well, he was a lazy bum. Yeah. Yeah, it. yeah but it powered the whole community, though. Yeah, he fucked over everyone, but that's what Rick yeah, does. Like, and, like, those two neighbors is like, uh, We noticed you've been placing your scrap metal in the blue bin. I got it. She's prissy. I know, right? Yeah, well... It's like, it shows that no matter what, Summer will always be a bitch. Mm-hmm. And kill me. Please. Okay. Just not because you told me to. Bang! Whoa, getting darker. Whoa, getting darker. <laughs> That's because she comes from a really, really terrible family brought on by the fact that her grandpa abandoned her mother and... You know, just just so he could get back at an alternate dimension of himself. <laughs> and could really care less if his real daughter lived or died. And so she had to overcompensate with that by trying to actually have a family after she got pregnated by a loser in high school. It's quite basic psychology of someone with issues. Mm. Or I may have just overlooked into all of this. By the way, uh, <laughs> did the third episode drop already, or was it just the second? Because I think I've seen promos for the third one already, or reviews. I think. Yeah, pickle Rick. I don't is, know. is that the third episode, or yeah, was it the? Yeah, that's the third one. Pickle no, because like I know the first ep the first episode was Rick Shank Redemption. The second episode was the apocalyptic. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's the Mad Max one. Third one's Pickle Rick, but then what about the roller coaster one? The one where Jerry is hanging out with Rick and he has that Rick has like a hole in his chest, but when you think about it, I think that's actually Cyborg Rick. Evil Morty's uh Cyborg Rick. Hmm. If you remember from Close Encounters of the Rick Kind. Uh oh uh, yeah. 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 I, I don't I think know what actually, that's gonna be. That's gonna actually, be a new I think that might, I think that might actually be Android Rick, because you actually, I think you actually see like the, that same Rick like reveal he has like a cybernetic eye and like a arm cannon, his hand literally turning into a cannon. Oh yeah, so he's Mega Man Rick. <laughs> pew pew pew! I don't really care. Mighty Number Rick. No. <laughs> No, oh, no, that's the Morty. That. That's his Morty. It's Mighty Number Morty. No. Yeah. Oh, like some... oh, oh I, like... I gotta fight all these robots! Oh. Uh, come on, Morty, you're acting like an anime fan on prom night. <laughs> fan on prom night. Oh. If they actually do that reference, I will just be shocked. <laughs> he was like, wow. I'm like, I can't believe they actually did it. That's worse than that one BuzzFeed comic book artist who insults people that gives him criticism. Okay. Um, I'm saying explain. that because that's a, a thing on the internet now. Apparently, just like this 
BuzzFeed comic book artist guy, guy just like reuses the same like uh, head sculpts for a lot of his comics to just make the comics quicker and easier. And he's kind of like snapping back at people kind of very immaturely. He's like, well, hey, I just want to give you a couple of like uh, creative advice. And he's like, well, guess what? I make money off of this. You don't. Wow. Do you have this guy's name? Hold on. I have him. I had a mention of him on my Facebook where trash goes to die horrible deaths. Let me see right here. He must be here. I post way too much, especially in the middle of the night. I don't remember a lot of the things I post. I wake up in a cold sweat. Yeah, she where, posts where all nighter. It happens. You're just like, uh, oh. Damn, what was it in the... Damn, I had something. Uh, it's all okay. Right, uh, you can wait. Che uh, Chester Bangton. Oh, yeah. The King of Edgelords is, is no longer with us. I did not know he had those kind of inner demons. Like, I, I didn't know about that. Uh, his name is Adam Ellis. Adam of Ellis. Of BuzzFeed. Sounds familiar. We were talking about uh, Chester Bennington right now. Oh, uh, yeah. Chester Bennington. Uh, the, lead, the singer of... Sing, the lead singer of Linkin Park who committed suicide not too long ago. Oh yeah, I've heard of him. Like, oh that that's unfortunate. Like, yeah, like I, I feel like for I, I real. I remember listening to some of his music as a kid. I liked it. You know, I like. I'm not a big fan of Linkin Park, but my sympathy does go out to both the fans and his family because, like, losing anyone at their own hands is a horrible thing. It robs people of someone they love of. A family member of a friend of a dad of a husband it it just it's it's it sucks and my heart goes out yeah my, <sighs> mine too because like i grew up on lincoln park i mean i listened to most of their songs even the new stuff just like I, like some of the lyrics really spoke to me, and some of the songs I loved growing up in high, like and in high school, it got me through some tough times. I used to remember I used to sit in my computer class, just mostly listening to like uh, songs on the ra on a radio, like a radio website while doing work. <laughs> hmm. Our teacher let us do it, but I'm like, I mostly just goofed around and just did stuff. Like I did my work though, but I also goofed around and just listened to music while doing it too. Yeah, I mean, Ch yeah. Chester, I mean, I, I feel for him. I mean, I have my own problems to deal with. And I mean, like, g going that far to just off yourself, I'm like, that, that that's just sad. I, my heart goes out to his family and his bandmates. I wonder how they're feeling. I mean, I hope they're all right. Man, hey, they lost a friend. Like, usually people who start a band are people who are just knew each other in high school or college i mean sure some bands are made at a studio mm -hmm. because they look for they scout for people and it's like hey we made a band you're gonna be this this and there these guys felt like they were just normal dudes that knew each other and just it's sad when anybody loses anyone just and i hope they're doing well as well yeah uh, I don't know. I listened to a lot of um, Linkin Park in my teenage years, of course. I'm your typical 2000s kid, but... Yeah. Um, millennial. Yeah, millennial, I guess is the term. But I guess I wasn't really a, that big of a fan, but I still appreciated, like, you know, his music. Yeah, they made some classics. Yeah. And it, it was really depressing when yeah, I heard about that. I just, I don't know, I just I have no words, you know. When someone dies, it's just it's one of those things you can't really fathom. Especially, you know, if it's someone that close to you. Okay.
Hey, you guys, uh, anything else? Any other depressing? Oh, yeah. Uh, did any of you guys check out the trailer for the Hey Arnold, the Jungle movie yet? No, I haven't, actually. Or it's Rocco's? Based... No, not Rocco. I've seen Rocco's, what? but not yeah, Hey Rocco? Arnold. Yeah, we, we'll, go back to, we'll go back to Rocco in a bit. But uh -huh. Hey Arnold, basically, it. I saw it was just basically like, I think like Arnold and his community, like Arnold's community is trying to get him to go to, go to this place. For, I don't know for some for like this uh accept this award and they did this like video of all the people Arnold's helped and how like they're all thankful for him. And I was like really happy because like I think they got some of the original voice actors for the whole series too. Like they got all the voice actors, like all the kids were there, like all of them had like explained how Arnold made them all happy. Like Stoop Kid is sitting at C City Hall. Thanking Arnold because now he can harass people off his stoop. Uh, the pigeon guy helped Arnold helped him uh, mm. escape his cage, and he's in fucking Notre Dame. And I think he's in France because you see Notre Dame in the background. I think he is in France. I thought he died. That's what I always thought. That he was. A no, ghost. he he's alive apparently. Yeah, wasn't apparently. that the original like idea for that episode? Where he he dies like, or something? I think they want. I think they made it ambiguous if he died or survived. Uh -huh. I never thought like he got carried away by the pigeons at the end, and I think everyone just assumed he died. But it turns out, no, he's alive. Well, like, he's alive. Like, oh. The Jungle movie confirms he's alive. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, that would have been interesting oh, though if birds. they did go with the uh, the death. <laughs> yeah, I death. think that would have been way. Like you just see it in the jungle somewhere, like his corpse, like his like that coat that he had. Like he died skeleton. eventually, but he made that video before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, God. Oh, God. Like some Parks and Rec stuff where he's like, yeah, he died like two hours after he did that. <laughs> You're like, that is messed up. But really, I liked it because they kept the spirit of the show, like what they did with Rocco's Modern Life. I mean, they kept the spirit of the show and stuff with both shows. Unlike certain shows lately, when they've been doing reboots, like... Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, I'll admit that. Like Power, I'm gonna say this now. Powerpuff Girls hasn't shown on Cartoon Network lately. They're mostly, mostly on, on the app. Yeah, and on Boomerang. Hmm. I think I linked a video about the current leader of Car the person running Cartoon Network and how I think I like the guy who posted the video was like explaining how she's ruining the series. She's like, the doing show. it by just like destroying it so people will go to the app. People will log in and purchase things on the app rather than watch television because, like, it's a filthy Frank scenario where it's like, that way when television dies, we won't get left behind. Mm. Yeah, I, I guess. Like, Maybe it's dying because you're killing it. Uh huh. I don't. I think she just wants to, um. What's the word I'm looking for? She. Ah, oh, damn it. It's basically, she doesn't know what she's doing. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to say. She wants to have it all, I guess. Because she thinks that just having Teen Titans go run constantly will just bring in the, the kid fans. And, um... Oh my I, god, that is terrifying. I actually saw the schedule. If it wasn't for OKKO... OK yeah. Oh my god. It was, like, it was like something out of The Shining. <laughs> I kept expecting Cyborg to appear, or Robin to appear, or to appear behind me like... Do you like it? Honestly, <laughs> like my head in the fuck out. Honestly, like the fact that they're showing T Titans go an entire month, I'm like, this is going too far. I think they're oversaturating Cartoon Network at this point. That they're gonna, I think they're eventually gonna be realizing like, okay, this needs to stop. We need to bring, well, Steven Universe is gonna be showing again. Thank God. You show just all their other shows that they had, because like when regular regular show ended. It was just gone. It was they didn't even like air it on, I guess, a uh, boomerang or anything like that. And uh, same is probably gonna happen for Adventure Time as well. And, and Clarence. I actually want that show to end though. Yeah, Adventure fair Time? enough. Yeah, I understand. I haven't been catching up with Adventure Time. I mean, aside from the Elements miniseries, that's it. The only people that really care about Adventure Time now are just shippers of bubblegum and like Marceline. That's it. That's that's all that's left. Mm-hmm. It's basically become one big fanfic after the last couple of seasons. 
Like after Fiona and Cake, it just uh, it went downhill. Mm -hmm. It really makes me miss regular show. Yeah, even the reruns. Like they don't need to bring it back because it's been around for like eight seasons and had like a bunch of specials and movies. But just at least air some of the episodes. That's all people are asking for. Or maybe they could actually make action shows. Oh wait, no, that'll terrify children. Yeah, we can't have violence, Trench. It might might convince kids to start interacting with each other in a physical way, you know? Make and it a boo-boo. not boo -boo. just say, instead of hugging each other for hours on end. <laughs> but, you know, isolating all those type of things makes things worse, right? Because you're basically cutting off those type of sensations from your brain, and it makes you crave them. Yeah, it just makes you repressed, and then, well, you know, just look at any school shooter, serial killer. They were repressed people. I'm yeah. not trying to make fun of that. They like they had no. needs. No. Yeah, I understand. And but here's the difference: we're not violent psychopaths. We just want to watch robots punch monsters, and it sucks. We can only get that when we pay twenty bucks to see a movie that's probably going to flop at the box office next time a romantic comedy hits the stage. That's what happened to the first Pacific Rim. Mm. <laughs> what did it, it lose out to? It lost to Adam Sandler. Oh, God. I what was the movie? A tried to drink themselves to death after hearing that. Uh, yeah, I think it was that Adam Sandler movie. Um, What was it? Romantic comedy. Generic romantic Un comedy, I don't know. Insert romantic comedy. But, yeah, just like, it just sucks that we don't have that anymore for kids. Adults don't have it, kids don't have it. What made Toonami good for both kids and audiences was because it played interesting retro cartoons from back in the day, mm -hmm. as long as some action stuff mixed with some new stuff. Nowadays, it's nothing but anime, and other networks have been doing that. It's just on now because of nostalgia's sake. It's running on fumes. Honestly, though, Nickelodeon's starting to win that war. I mean, mm -hmm. well, they're bringing Rocko's Modern Life back. They're bringing Hey Arnold back for those movies. Hell, Disney's doing better. I mean, Star vs. The Force of Evil. They had that two-hour premiere. Loved it. Uh, Pokemon moved over to Disney. Uh, Disney's also getting gaming channels and stuff like Polaris to work together with them. Uh, also, there's... Netflix and all those shows are have Net their animated huh? series on there, like Voltron and Castlevania. Oh God, yes! Like basically, Voltron. everyone's doing well except for Cartoon Network for some reason can't get its game together because she wants to, you know, basically have it all. Like I said, she wants to have T Teen Titans Go do well, and then the app, I guess, to bring in like maybe I guess older people like teenagers yeah but in all honesty like I think someone just needs to come up and just tell her look Teen Titans Go ain't doing well this needs to stop you have a problem it just have like an intervention <laughs> maybe what if okay this is a what if what if there's oh, some industrial God. espionage stuff going there what if she actually works for a competitor network that wants to buy them out so she's in there destroying everything under the guise of business decisions. So that way they become so desperate for a bailout, they go to another certain company or some type of firm to get money from them, and they acquire the rights to everything. Really? <laughs> this, this thought just goes into my head every now and then. Huh. I go. <laughs> well, hey, it's like, just it's a theory. All conspiracy. It's a it's just a the theory. Film that's just going theory. In my I I don't have it like stapled to my wall with red ribbons attached to it yet. <laughs> Pan mm. around in my room, you see it's like something from a beautiful mind. That movie's super sad. Yeah, it, it was. Even though the real story was just more funny than sad, but still. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Cartoon Network, hopefully OKKO OK restores the balance. If but not, I then... keep feeling that show's going to get canceled. 
Honestly, I actually re they are gonna air all tw like twenty episodes this se this month. I'm like, wow, that's a shocker. But there's also, I think, the fact that at the San Diego Comic Con there was a poster of the OG Teen Titans beating the shit out of the new Teen T Teen Titans Go. Yeah, right after they go to the the light that shines dimension. Oh my god, I saw the first episode, the second episode of that. I didn't they see that. Fallout Boy and T Pain. I couldn't stop. I was, I was, I was like, I was like, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Mm. Oh, just, oh. Yeah. I felt like I was in that movie Hardcore where I was just going Turn it off Turn it off <laughs> That needs to be a meme where people use that more Just like It's just a picture of a guy watching a movie screen He's just like turn it off Turn it off Or like better The uh, Halloween season of which is like Switch the station Turn it off please turn That's it even off. better <laughs> uh. He's like, he's begging, screaming into the phone. Turn it off! Turn it off! Stop it! Oh my god, it's like, it's almost sad, and it's like, they even make a couple Fall Boy jokes that I was a bit disappointed they didn't make. Like, I have a feeling the main singer was like the reason they did this, or their manager, because this feels like Ghostbusters all over again. Hmm. Fallout Boy, just like, wow. It's like, you guys are still popular. I didn't think Ghostbusters destroyed your popularity that bad. Well, you know, Sony finds a way. Yeah, but this is Warner now. <laughs> I don't know. They're... Sony's legacy just lingers on. It's like a curse... Once, once you're affected by it, it just spreads. Warner is... I think they're putting way too much stock into their movies rather than their cartoon shows. This is what happened when... I think Mike Laszlo needs to be reinstated as Cartoon Network president. You sure, like, considering what he went... What he kind of did? He did a retarded thing. He hired two... It's just a prank bro people uh -huh. to go out in 9-11 paranoid America. Yeah. And, and Mike Laszlo, he's what made Cartoon Network Cartoon Network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, Christina Miller, that's her name. Mm. I, I don't no know. No offense. I bet she's probably a very smart business person. I yeah. just think that she doesn't know how to run a children's network mm -mm. and if kids actually like teen titans go then that's not a good sign it might be for profits and quarterly earnings but if you're running that type of business like cartoon network that has a very rabid as well as diehard fan base of adults who show their kids cartoons rather than your competing networks you're kind of betraying them, and you're making it look like your uh, opponents are better at entertaining kids. And it also makes it feel like you're out of touch. And so much so, like, why do you think, like, the Create Regular Show people don't work on a new show for Cartoon Network? It's like they don't want to work for them anymore. Because they feel confided or trapped by what they want. Mm -hmm. instead of what they want to do and it's sadness really and I think Mike Laszlo needs to come back or someone that is that worked with Mike Laszlo because this isn't going to cut it I mean for goodness sake even kids tune out Teen Titans Go and that's your target demographic yeah because eventually they'll yeah, grow like up yeah like the ratings have been the ratings have been kind of going lower and lower. Because, you know, they're going to lose interest eventually. Either they grow up or they, they'll they just, like, you know, go to another network. Or they'll do the one thing every TV network fears. Turn off the television and go outside. <laughs> <gasps> Honestly, like, I would not be surprised if, like, the current Cartoon Network president just is, I guess... 
decides, okay, this isn't working. What are we going to do? And suddenly she just gets the bright idea to start, like, airing, like, some of the shows from Netflix. Like, what, cr like, I guess what Crunchyroll is doing. Like, how I can show, like, shows from Netflix and stuff. Uh, I don't, that would be a legal nightmare. Cartoon Network just becomes the app and the channel just becomes the Teen Titans Go station. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no. like well, good thing I got. Good thing we got YouTube <laughs> and other I just, means. I just want yeah. OKKO OK to survive because I feel with Teen Titans Go out there, it's never going to get noticed, especially with this months-long marathon out of nowhere. Please. And don't forget the 25th anniversary is coming up in a few months. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about OKKO OK doing in this current climate. I, I hope it survives, because it, it has a lot of potential, but it's going to be squandered as usual. Oh, it totally will. Like, It's ridiculous what's going to happen to it. Uh... Alright, well, you guys want to end it off Especially... here? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Trench. Go ahead. Possibly, like, but I would like what? to make my piece about OKKO OK real mm -hmm. quick. I think sure. it's a great show. It has a lot of a lot of just prosperity involved in it as well as opportunity. But I feel like Ian Jones Quarterly and to the people that worked on it, especially the fact they had Studio Trigger people make the opening for it. And it's a huge tribute to things that really the kids <laughs> today didn't grow up with. <laughs> it's going to get canceled. But hopefully because it gets canceled, it actually ends on a somber note rather than you know, be begged and begged to come back to result in a crappy final, final season ending. That'll mm. just make your fan base spiteful of you rather than, you know, make them feel satisfied. Honestly, like, if we're going to be talking about that, I mean, I thought the regular show finale was pretty good. Then again, I got low standards. <laughs> I was saying Samurai Jack, but okay. Oh, that's what you were referring to? I thought you were referring to... Never mind. I mean, with Samurai Jack, yeah, I mean, Gendy wanted it over, and I felt that it was, yes, it was rushed. They could have made it like an hour. I mean, if they had made it an hour long thing, it would have been a lot better, or maybe 45 minutes. I felt they could have done more. They're like, nah, I'll just end it. Mm. But at the very least, we got something. I mean, yeah, it was bittersweet, but at the same time, it leaves hope for the future, I guess. And I guess this could also be like a certain message for Gendy. Like, the future might, the present might be bleak, but the future might be looking bright. And in this the current days. day and age, like, we need, we need hope. Because otherwise, what will we have to live for? Nothing. Just surviving day after day in a pointless gray existence. Wait, we don't do that? We do. I'm That's just saying. Well, existential. <laughs> okay. Existential is on. Yeah, let's end it right here before we get too existential. All right, I'm a uh, yeah, I'm DZ Dog, and I'm a contrarian. Who are you, folks? I'm Austin Trench, and I was, I was super glued to a podium. <laughs> really? No. No. Mark, it's a joke. <laughs> No, uh, no, I get it, I get it. And, uh, Dragon King Mark and jokes just fly over my head. Mm hmm. Okay, well, we'll see you guys later, I guess. You know, maybe we'll get old Logan on here. See ya. See ya. Well, that was fun.